Dear ladies and gentlemen, on November 8, 2013, a 14-year-old girl, half Filipino, half Belgian, who has been living in the Philippines ever since she was born, lost her home, her town, and most especially, her father. Now, you're all probably wondering, how come she lost so many things in such a short amount of time? Two words, ladies and gentlemen. Typhoon Haiyan, the strongest tropical cyclone to hit land with winds of 300 kilometers per hour and storm surges of almost six meters. It took away more than 6,000 lives and affected 4.4 million people. That same little girl, ladies and gentlemen, is my sister. She had to swim in our own living room with whirlpools all around her. But don't get me wrong, I'm not here to ask for your pity or to talk about how horrible it was. Today, I'm here to share certain things that I learned while overcoming this great challenge. As a Filipina, climate change has always been an obvious issue in my country. Being constantly hit by typhoons that increase in number throughout the years left me aware of this issue. But it seems that a large part of the world stays oblivious to its consequences. Or not. Haiyan Bay being a record-breaking storm serves as a universal eye-opener on how serious the problem actually is. If the Filipinos may be the direct victims of climate change, but do not let this fool you. It's not only concentrated in those certain parts of the world, sooner or later, it will be at our doorstep. Think about it. Don't you find it scary that we practically didn't have winter this year? Or that the United States experienced extreme weather conditions with very low temperatures? Or that the south of England was heavily flooded in the beginning of this year? It doesn't matter that it happened in Asia, Europe, or America, because we are all citizens of this world, and we're all responsible of its future. We cannot wait for another catastrophe to happen because its consequences will only continue to grow in number. In the past three years, there were more natural disasters than it was 20 years ago. 80% of this alarming gro growth were due to climate-related events. When I researched these figures, I thought to myself, and I was shocked at the magnitude of the numbers. Isn't this proof enough that there must be something wrong with how our society works. And shouldn't we all be looking for solutions? In my opinion, the first step to combating climate change starts with ourselves. Irresponsible consumption is still very common, especially here in the West. Sadly, only a certain part of the world tries to tackle this problem and give solutions. How many of us still have this mentality of wasting food. I do not want to generalize, but I have been to far too many households wherein food is considered abundant, and so throwing away the less appealing ones is considered okay. Now let me share to you a small anecdote. In my first Girl Scout camp here in Belgium, we usually ate bread plus Nutella for breakfast. Now I was outraged when I saw the other girls open a new pot of Nutella while the old one was not completely finished yet. How many pots of Nutella were wasted by the end of the three-week-long camp? The society of consumerism is killing our planet. The more we consume, the more we produce. The more we produce, the more we cripple our world by sucking out its resources. Let us learn how to limit some of our desires and give importance to the survival of humanity instead. Today, my challenge is to convince and urge you to combat climate change. Your challenge is to decide on whether or not you want to be persuaded to do so. If the Filipinos, with their remarkable resilience, were able to bounce back from Typhoon Haiyan, then I believe that we can all bounce back from climate change for the sake of our planet. If the human race we're able, to, we're able to give as much solidarity 
and support to the Typhon victims, then I believe that we can give this much support in saving our planet. We only have one life and one world. Maraming salamat. Thank you. Hi. Um, I'm wondering, how is it then that such a large amount of people still deny that there is global warming? I believe that those persons, they choose to not look at the problem because they don't want to change their habits. Because I believe that it is by changing our habits that we can make a difference. And we may, see, we may say that, yeah, then maybe they'll, they'll give a scientific proof or whatever, but I think basically it's their mentality that they don't want to accept that they have to change. Thank you. During your speech, you asked the question, shouldn't we all be looking for solutions? What do you do to tackle climate change? Well, if you want a really concrete co example, it's here right now, I'm talking to you about it. With my personal story, I want to be able to convince all of you that this is a problem that we should really look at and give the best the effort that it deserves. Thank you. Uh, yes, we we only have one life. Could this lie at the re could this be the reason why people aren't that concerned with global warming? Because it's such a long term effect that we just think, okay, this is for the next generation. I believe that if you're an adequate person, you would be feeling a bit guilty that your children, your grandchildren, will experience will, be, will experience the effects of your mistakes. So, I think that. If you're an adequate person, then you shouldn't only think about your lifetime. Because what is life then if you only are selfish and not thinking about the next generations to come? Thank you. Yes, well, I consider myself an adequate person, but why don't I take action then? I believe that since the impacts of climate change is not completely here yet and it's not taking away somebody you love, and I think. Because of that, I'm really shaken. And I believe, I'm not saying that you should experience the same thing as I did, but I want that with my speech, I can, able, I can convince you to do so. Thank you. Um, if we limit our consumption, will we not also limit our economic growth? When I say to limit our consumption, I'm not, I'm not actually saying that, that we shouldn't... Uh, um, provide our basic needs or anything. But when you walk into the store, you should really ask, do I need this? Don't I have something at home that maybe it's not the, the next or the new version, but it's still usable? I believe that we should all ask this question. This, the, uh, in any case, the economy will continue to, to um, turn because we still need our basic uh, needs. And we don't have to like, give way to these um, desires that are not really reasonable. Thank you. Do you think we can ever break the link between consumerism and climate change? I believe that if today I may at least convince a certain part of the audience, then I believe that those people I convinced can at least already start the step that we should all take. Thank you. Um, ecologically responsible products often cost more than the other options. How would you convince someone to actually start paying more money for something that only benefits the ecology, so to say? I think that that's not the only way to help our planet. There are so many other ways. And if, if financially you're not able to buy those products, like you say, because there are a lot of countries in the world that don't even have access to those products. But there are so many other ways. Like, for example, there's this, the step of walking to school instead of like, um, taking your car, that's already, if you, if like you count all of the students, it's already a big difference, so it doesn't really matter. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Ms. Cordero. Thank you.